Hi everyone. This video we're going to be talking about how to uh, prove uh, the validity of arguments using indirect truth tables. Now you might be wondering what the point of learning indirect truth tables is if you already know how to prove a valid argument using the old method. Well, indirect truth tables are a really quick way to just prove if an argument is valid or not. Now that doesn't mean that there isn't any value in using the old truth tables because the old truth tables show you all of the possibilities so you can really just if you really want to see everything all the information uh, you can't use indirect truth tables for that but indirect truth tables are just a really quick way to see if an argument's valid or not and so uh, if you know if you if that's the only piece of information that you want you really can't beat indirect truth tables so let's take a look at some arguments that are valid um, let's see let's say we have the argument uh, if p then q, so p, we're going to draw a little arrow, equal sign, open parenthesis, open quotes, uh, dash dash, greater than sign, close quote, and then q. So p then q, we're going to separate this with a uh, forward slash. Hold on. We're going to separate this with a forward slash, and then we're going to get p, then we're going to separate uh, this with two forward slashes to indicate the conclusion and then we're going to type in here Q. So this argument structure is if, if P then Q, P then Q. Uh, so P then Q is a premise which is if you have P then you have Q and then this argument is saying you have P and so the conclusion is saying you have Q. Alright so how do we prove indirect, uh, how do we prove that this argument is valid? Well, we start by assuming that the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So, um, uh, in the previous ways, we've uh, we've given uh, truth values. We've assigned true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and you know we've given uh, truth values to the operator as a result. But since we're just going to assume that the argument as a whole is true, all we need to do is we just need to give a truth value of true to the main operator. So the main operator right here is conditional, and uh, its um, antecedent and its consequent are p then q, and so the truth value for the whole thing we're just assuming that it's true, so we only need to give it one truth value. Uh, our next premise is just p, so we're also assuming that p is true. Um, so we're just going to give it uh, truth value of true right here. Then we're assuming that the conclusion q is false, so we're going to give the conclusion q uh, truth value of false. Now with that done, let's take a look at the argument. So we have right here, we can see that, um, well actually, we've assigned all the truth values. Typically we start from right to left, so that's how I'm going to do it. Um, so right here we see Q uh, has a truth value of false. So right here we have a Q, so we're going to give it a truth value of false. And right here to our right we see P, P has a truth value of true, so we're going to give this P a truth value of true. Now, as you can see right here, we have a truth value of true and false. Now, if uh, on the conditional we have a truth value of true for antecedent and a truth value of false for a consequent, then the truth value of the conditional is false. But we assume that it's true. So we have true, true, false, which is a contradiction. And so hence, uh, we found the contradiction that we, were, that we assumed and that we were looking for. And as a result, the argument is valid. Um, so again, we assume the conditional was true. We assume that the other prem because the conditional was part of the premise. We assume that this other part of the premise is true. We assume that the conclusion is false, and so we assume that the argument is invalid. And so by assuming that the argument is invalid, we find a contradiction. And the reason we find a contradiction is because the argument is not invalid. Um, so let me give you uh, an example of an argument where we don't find a contradiction. So a very similar argument. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, let's see. So I'm just gonna copy over the conditional in a second. So p then q. So right here p, right here q. I'm just gonna use my equal sign. Go up three spaces, hit enter, just to copy it. Then I'm gonna double. Well, I'll just uh, type my equal sign right here again. Hit enter, and then I'll do the same thing right here. Equal sign, enter. Um, so p then q, and then uh, I actually need to move this a bit gonna move it one over here. I'm gonna put not p and then I'm gonna put therefore not q. 
here. So, in this statement since we're going to assume true premises and a false conclusion, and we're going to see if we come up to a contradiction. So right here, again, our main operator is conditional, so we're going to assume that it's true. Right here, if you jump directly to the P, uh, you'd be making a mistake because P isn't the main operator. It's being negated, and so the negation is the main operator. So we're going to assume the negation is true, and we're going to assume that P is false. And similarly here, we're going to assume the same thing. The negation is the main operator, so we're going to assume that the negation is false, and then we're going to assume that Q is true. Um, so right here, we see that uh, P is false, so we get a false right here. And we assume that Q is true, so we get a true right here. False and true is true. Remember, whenever the antecedent is false, the conditional is always true. So we assume that the argument was invalid, and we didn't find a contradiction. And if we assume that it was invalid, and we didn't find a contradiction, that means that the argument uh, actually is invalid. Because if it wasn't invalid, if it was valid, and we assumed that it was invalid, we would find a contradiction, just as we did in this argument right here. Uh, so that's just a quick introduction on how to do, uh, on how to prove um, arguments are invalid using indirect truth tables. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a very long argument, and I'm going to show you uh, really why indirect truth tables are really, really. Uh, superior to the traditional method when dealing with really long arguments. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.